Hi Year 11s, it's Miranda again. Um, in the last video I spoke to you about uh, the things you're going to be thinking about as you move into through Year 11 and the choices you're going to have to make for after Year 11. Um, in this video we're going to concentrate on the pathways that you can take and I've split those into two, that's vocational and academic and I'm going to give you a little bit more information about what those two things mean uh, so that you can make the best decision for you. So I'm going to start with vocational. Um, vocational basically means uh, connected to work so you might hear some say you know what's your vocation it means what's your what's the thing that you really want to do in work um, and a, a really good example of a vocational pathway is uh, an apprenticeship I'm actually going to do a, a separate video on apprenticeships because there's quite a lot to say about them but um, in summary it's work with training you'd be with an employer um, you'd be doing a real job uh, you get paid um, and you do training alongside it. Uh, every apprenticeship is different, so it, it really depends on, on what the particular apprenticeship that you're doing, how that might look. So you might spend some time at a college, for example, or with a training provider, or you might just be in the, with the employer all, all the time. So that's, you know, it's a really good option if you've got a particular job that you've got in mind that you'd like to do when you're older and there's a, a clear apprenticeship pathway towards it. Another uh, vocational uh, way of learning is through uh, courses which uh, give you um, a qualification like an MVQ, which means a National Vocational Qualification. Um, so you'll find things like trades courses, things like hairdressing, are generally going to end up giving you a practical qualification. Um, so that's another route. So you're, you're kind of training, but you're not necessarily being paid for it because it's not an apprenticeship. For those of you that maybe aren't going to get your full GCSE qualifications, you might be looking at level one, which is just below GCSE, or level two, which is GCSE qualifications. Um, and some of those sort of alternative qualifications or lower level ones are, are more vocational. So there might be things like learning for life, um, helping you sort of get work ready, all sorts of things from hospitality to outdoor education. And there's lots of different qualifications, but they're um, for people who maybe haven't quite got the, the GCSEs that they need. So you might see those when you're looking at courses. And the last vocational qualification, which is a sort of, it's a bit of a bridging one because actually there's an academic elements as well and that those are called BTECs. And they tend to have more coursework than um, A-levels, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But sometimes you'll find that there are subjects which you could actually do as a BTEC or as an A-level. And so that can get a bit confusing sometimes. So it's good to know that they are different. Um, and generally the main thing is that they're more related to work. So the curriculum is more, is more kind of applied. It's more practical. I'll talk about BTECs more in the in the vlog on choosing subjects to study. What's good about them is you can actually do them alongside A-levels, so they're the only vocational qualification where that's possible. So you can't do, for example, an apprenticeship and A-levels at the same time, but you could do BTECs and A-levels at the same time. I'm going to move on now to academic pathways. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is A-levels, which I'm sure most of you will have heard of. They are, in a sense, the traditional route, um, the one that a lot of people do. They do their GCSEs, they do their A-levels, and they go on to university or working or an apprenticeship or whatever it is they do afterwards. Um, so A-levels, there's lots to choose from. You know, you've been doing your GCSEs where you had a bit of choice. Um, A-levels is much broader. In some colleges, you know, they're offering... 30, 40, 50, even more maybe. It's a real wide variety of subjects you might not have, have heard of before. Um, they are pretty exam heavy. Some of them have a bit more coursework, but um, you know you might find somewhere it's pretty much all exams at the end. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind. And then last but not least is the International Baccalaureate, or shortened to the IB. Um, there is only one college in the local area in Brighton and Hove, which is Van Dien, that offers that. It's generally aimed at people who do particularly well at their GCSEs. So if you're someone that has an interest in lots of different subjects, because that's the, the speciality of I, the IB. Whereas with A-levels, you only usually get to choose three, maybe four. The IB is, is um, a variety of subjects but some of them you have to take. So if you've only really got a couple of subjects that you're really strong in, the IB is probably not right for you, but if you're quite good across the board and you're really interested in lots of subjects, then it's definitely something to think about. 
I guess one of the things that is, is really important at this point is to, to be thinking about you know, what is the right pathway for me? Um, and speaking to your friends, your teachers, careers advisor, your parents, carers, to get an idea of you know what they see as your strengths um, to help you figure things out. So if you're someone that really enjoys the classroom or works quite well in the classroom, you've got maybe an idea about what you might want to do afterwards and that needs an A-level route because some jobs do have a preference over A-levels, for example, medicine. The A-level or the IB route is probably a good plan for you. If you're very much the other way, so you really don't enjoy classroom learning, you like to be active, you like to be learning by doing, you like the idea of either earning money while you learn or certainly being out and about doing things, um, then it's a really good idea to maybe look at the vocational pathways, either an apprenticeship or a course which has a, a more practical element, so maybe even VTEX. So, you know, really have a, have a think about what is the right pathway for you. If you have a job in mind for the future, you can research what that job might need. I'm going to put some web links underneath for you to just do a bit of research because what you don't want is to be going off on one pathway thinking, oh yeah, this is going to take me where I want to go and then discover that actually it won't. I will say, you know, for most things there's always a way through so never worry about making a huge mistake there's always different ways to get to places but having a little being pre-warned and having a, a good idea about um, what's possible with what your pathway that you've chosen and um, what that can lead to my ask is this week is for you if you have a job in mind is for you to use the websites that I'm going to put at the end uh, to look up that job and to see if it says that there's a particular route for example if it says you absolutely need to have a degree a university degree in this subject you can then check um, on the university website to see what a levels they might require because if they say we want these A-levels and if you don't have them you can't get into the university which means then you can't go on to do that job that's really important for you guys to, to be aware of. Take care and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!